Hi there, this is Core Tan, and welcome to my channel. Today's topic is about, common autoimmune diseases. What is an autoimmune disease? An autoimmune disease is a condition in which your immune system mistakenly attacks your body. The immune system normally guards against germs like bacteria and viruses. When it senses these foreign invaders, it sends out an army of fighter cells to attack them. Normally, the immune system can tell the difference between foreign cells and your own cells. It releases proteins called autoantibodies that attack healthy cells. Some autoimmune diseases target only one organ. Why does the immune system attack the body? Doctors don't know exactly what causes the immune system to misfire. Yet some people are more likely to get an autoimmune disease than others. According to a 2014 study, women get autoimmune diseases at a rate of about 2 to 1 compared to men, 6.4% of women versus 2.7% of men. Often the disease starts during a woman's childbearing years, ages 15 to 44. Certain autoimmune diseases, like multiple sclerosis and lupus, run in families. Not every family member will necessarily have the same disease, but they inherit a susceptibility to an autoimmune condition. Because the incidence of autoimmune diseases is rising, researchers suspect environmental factors like infections and exposure to chemicals or solvents might also be involved. A Western diet is another suspected risk factor for developing an autoimmune disease. Eating high fat, high sugar and highly processed foods is thought to be linked to inflammation, which might set off an immune response. However, this hasn't been proven. A 2015 study focused on another theory called the hygiene hypothesis. Because of vaccines and antiseptics, children today aren't exposed to as many germs as they were in the past. The lack of exposure could make their immune system prone to overreact to harmless substances. 1. Rheumatoid Arthritis RA. In rheumatoid arthritis RA, the immune system attacks the joints. This attack causes redness, warmth, soreness, and stiffness in the joints. Unlike osteoarthritis, which commonly affects people as they get older, RA can start as early as your 30s or sooner. 2. Addison's Disease Addison's disease affects the adrenal glands, which produce the hormones cortisol and aldosterone as well as androgen hormones. Having too little cortisol can affect the way the body uses and stores carbohydrates and sugar, glucose. The deficiency of aldosterone will lead to sodium loss and excess potassium in the bloodstream. Symptoms include weakness, fatigue, weight loss, and low blood sugar. 3. Type 1 Diabetes Type 1 diabetes damages the pancreas. Other diseases, like systemic lupus erythematosus SLE, affect the whole body. Kids and teens with type 1 diabetes are more likely to get disorders affecting the thyroid. The pancreas produces the hormone insulin, which helps regulate blood sugar levels. In type 1 diabetes mellitus, the immune system attacks and destroys insulin-producing cells in the pancreas. High blood sugar results can lead to damage in the blood vessels, as well as organs like the heart, kidneys, eyes, and nerves. 4. Hashimoto's thyroiditis. In Hashimoto's thyroiditis, thyroid hormone production slows to a deficiency. Symptoms include weight gain, sensitivity to cold, fatigue, hair loss, and swelling of the thyroid, goiter. The thyroid, which is part of the endocrine system, makes hormones that help control metabolism and growth. These hormones play a role in bone development, puberty, and many other body functions. Thyroid disease is fairly common in people with type 1 diabetes, affecting 15% to 20% of them. In thyroid disease, the thyroid gland might make too much thyroid hormone, hypothyroidism, or too little hormone, hypothyroidism. Both hypothyroidism and hypothyroidism can be accompanied by an enlarged thyroid gland, called a goiter, though it's not always visible. Hypothyroidism can cause nervousness, irritability, increased sweating, intolerance to heat, tiredness, sleep problems, a fast heartbeat, irregular menstrual periods in girls, and muscle weakness. People also might lose weight even though they're eating more than usual. 
The eyes may feel irritated or look like they're staring. Sometimes the tissues around the eyes become inflamed and swollen, and the eyes appear to bulge out. Someone with mild hypothyroidism may feel just fine and have no symptoms. But symptoms can become more obvious if the condition gets worse. People with underactive thyroids might feel depressed and sluggish, or gain weight even though they're not eating more or getting less exercise than usual. Kids with hypothyroidism also might have slow growth in height, slow sexual development, muscle weakness, dry skin, hair loss, poor memory, and trouble concentrating. To check for thyroid disorders, the doctor may ask about symptoms and feel your child's neck for an enlargement of the thyroid gland or order blood tests. Kids with thyroid problems might take prescription medicine to bring their thyroid hormone levels back to normal. 5. Graves disease. Graves disease attacks the thyroid gland in the neck, causing it to produce too much of its hormones. Thyroid hormones control the body's energy usage, known as metabolism. Having too much of these hormones revs up your body's activities, causing symptoms. One potential symptom of this disease is bulging eyes, called exophthalmus. It can occur as a part of what is called Graves' ophthalmopathy, which occurs in around 30% of those who have Graves' disease, according to a 1993 study. 6. Psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis. Skin cells normally grow and then shed when they're no longer needed. Psoriasis causes skin cells to multiply too quickly. The extra cells build up and form inflamed red patches, commonly with silver-white scales of plaque on the skin. Up to 30% of people with psoriasis also develop swelling, stiffness, and pain in their joints. This form of the disease is called psoriatic arthritis. 7. Inflammatory Bowel Disease Inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, is a term used to describe conditions that cause inflammation in the lining of the intestinal wall. Each type of IBD affects a different part of the GI tract. Crohn's disease can inflame any part of the GI tract, from the mouth to the anus. Ulcerative colitis affects only the lining of the large intestine, colon, and rectum. 8. Multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis, MS, damages the myelin sheath, the protective coating that surrounds nerve cells, in your central nervous system. Damage to the myelin sheath slows the transmission speed of messages between your brain and spinal cord to and from the rest of your body. This damage can lead to symptoms like numbness, weakness, balance issues, and trouble walking. The disease comes in several forms that progress at different rates. According to a 2012 study, about 50% of people with MS need help walking within 15 years after the disease starts. 9. Systemic Lupus Erythematosus SLE. Although doctors in the 1800s first described lupus as a skin disease because of the rash it commonly produces, the systemic form, which is most common, actually affects many organs, including the joints, kidneys, brain, and heart. Joint pain, fatigue, and rashes are among the most common symptoms. This condition causes deficiency of a protein, made my stomach lining cells, known as an intrinsic factor that is needed in order for the small intestine to absorb vitamin B12 from food. Without enough of this vitamin, one will develop anemia, and the body's ability for proper DNA synthesis will be altered. 10. Pernicious Anemia Symptoms of pernicious anemia may include fatigue, shortness of breath, rapid heart rate, jaundice or pallor, tingling and numbness of hands and feet, loss of appetite, diarrhea, unsteadiness when walking, bleeding gums, impaired sense of smell, and confusion. Pernicious anemia is more common in older adults. According to a 2012 study, it affects 0.1% of people in general, but nearly 2% of people over age 60. 11. Sjogren's Syndrome. This condition attacks the glands that provide lubrication to the eyes and mouth. The hallmark symptoms of Sjogren's syndrome are dry eyes and dry mouth, but it may also affect the joints or skin. 12. Myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis affects nerve impulses that help the brain control the muscles. When the communication from nerves to muscles is impaired, signals can't direct the muscles to contract. 
The most common symptom is muscle weakness that gets worse with activity and improves with rest. Often muscles that control eye movements, eyelid opening, swallowing, and facial movements are involved. 13. Autoimmune vasculitis. Autoimmune vasculitis happens when the immune system attacks blood vessels. The inflammation that results narrows the arteries and veins, allowing less blood to flow through them. 14. Celiac disease. People with celiac disease can't eat foods containing gluten, a protein found in wheat, rye, and other grain products. When gluten is in the small intestine, the immune system attacks this part of the gastrointestinal tract and causes inflammation. A 2015 study noted that celiac disease affects about 1% of people in the United States. A larger number of people have reported gluten sensitivity, which isn't an autoimmune disease but can have similar symptoms like diarrhea and abdominal pain. Treatment for autoimmune disorders. Autoimmune disorders, in general, cannot be cured, but the condition can be controlled in many cases. Historically, treatments include anti-inflammatory drugs, to reduce inflammation and pain, corticosteroids, to reduce inflammation. They are sometimes used to treat an acute flare of symptoms. Pain-killing medication, such as paracetamol and codeine, immunosuppressant drugs, to inhibit the activity of the immune system, physical therapy, to encourage mobility, treatment for the deficiency, for example, insulin injections in the case of diabetes, surgery, for example, to treat bowel blockage in the case of Crohn's disease, high-dose immunosuppression, the use of immune system suppressing drugs, in the doses needed to treat cancer or to prevent the rejection of transplanted organs, have been tried recently, with promising results. Particularly when intervention is early, the chance of a cure with some of these conditions seems possible. Thanks for watching. Click the bell Parama notify car for upcoming videos. Don't forget to subscribe. Like and share. Click the bell Parama notify car for upcoming videos.